its daily life. Actually, it's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. What we're doing as a ministry is we're choosing to render grace for grace, forgiveness for forgiveness, mercy for mercy, love for love, because it's too easy to create our own image of God and start our own religion or our own church or our own ideas about God as opposed to let God speak for himself and open our ears that we might hear what he would say to us. So Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we want to kind of take a different tack. Maybe take a different direction, as it were. Maybe, just maybe we got something here that we hadn't thought of before. Maybe we're going to start our day in a better way because we're not all about Oh God, here's another day, I gotta go to work, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. But we're looking forward to what God has in store for us this day that He's made for us and created. That, no, it's not always about happy, 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 happy is the people whose God is the Lord. Or uh, miserable is Christians because we have to suffer through the sufferings of Christ that we might pertain and attain to the radical extreme religious idea that we are puritans and we have it all together and we have our THD and our PhD so you see we know what we're doing and we are theologically hermeneutically homiletically drash midrash and got a rash correct oh please Come on, get a grip. It's a sense of humor. Jesus paid the price for your sins. From that moment on, guess what? It's all about you cleaning up your act. Get it together. Let's get on with it. Let's move on. Let's discover. Let's uncover. Let's go forward with what God might do in your life. I know what he's done in mine. And man, what a mess <laughs> that I made of it. Did I say that? Yes, <laughs> what a mess I made of my life. But what a glorious, transitional metamorphosis God has done in my life to cause it to become His workmanship created for good works in Himself. Because God can do that where I can't clean up my mess. Can you? Are you stuck in something that you can't fix? Are you in a place where you can't get out of? Have you done something, oh my God, that's unforgivable? Guess what? Jesus will forgive you. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? And who among the sons of the mighty shall be likened unto the God that we serve? My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousand, one pearl of great price. The prince of the kings of the earth, his head is as most fine gold, his locks are bushy and black as raven, the head over all things. He is the head of the body, the church. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers. He could not be hid. His lips like lilies, dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. Never a man spoke like this man. His lips like lilies, dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. Oh, what a man this man was that spoke like this. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Let the Son of God rise with healing in his wings and shine upon you, that you may see what it is that God is doing in you to accomplish his purpose through you, to do something for you that you never thought he would do to you. And you know, judging by where you've been, I'll bet you're kind of glad that he's working on you that way. <laughs>
Don't you think so? Judging by what the rest of us are seeing, maybe it's a good thing that God is working on you. Hmm. Maybe I don't need all these people to tell me what to do because God is already doing it to me. You mean those guys that are condemning me because I like grace and I take it to his face and I leave it in his place so that he can do what he needs to do in my place? Hmm. I think I like this grace. This grace seems to work pretty good. It's like I let God be good and I let me be me. Is that a good thing? I think so. But don't I have to do something? Don't I have to hear God speak? Don't I have to let God be alive and well and living in me to accomplish His work that He is doing? Or should I get in the way and put on my airs of sophistication? Open my Bible? Read my doxology? My statement of faith, my assertions, my swearing, my allegiance, my pledge, my money. Give me the money, yeah. Give it all to the body of Christ. Blessings will come to you if you just give it to God. But never mind the poor man on the street. No, no, no. Never mind the guy that, you know, isn't part of the church. God can't bless you if you're helping them. Only if you give it to thy anointed pastor, who might not be the Christian minister that you think he is. You see, the reality is, when you hear God speak, he tells you what to do. What will you do when you don't know where to go? When you don't know who is right and who is wrong? How do you tell the difference? I read it in the Bible. I, I know Deuteronomy. I know Genesis. I know Exodus. I know Leviticus. I know Torah. I have my Messianic Jewish Hebrew Hebraic roots down. And I am a Talmudic scholar. So, was it the Jews in Jesus' day the same? Did they recognize him when he came? Did they listen to his voice? Did they do what he said? Will you? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Because if it's not the Lord leading you, you're being deceived either by yourself someone else, or the world, or your own ideas. Hmm, that seems strange. Oh my father, now that's the place to go. Seems like if a father cares about me, he'll take care of me. Don't you think so? If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this cause came I unto this hour. I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. No. Can we back up a minute? I don't want to do God's will. He might send me to Africa, to Asia, to China to Timbuktu, and who knows what he may do to you. <laughs> who knows what God may do to you? Who knows what God may use you for? Oh, but Lord, haven't we done all these marvelous things in thy name? Haven't we been a Christian music artist with seven gold labels and the accolades and the responses of thousands of people buying my CDs and 
Yeah, they wrote me letters and said they got saved through the music. They got saved through the words. They got saved through the lyrics. And I went on at Christian Cruz, you know, and I remember seeing people come forward. Well done, now, good and faithful servant. And as much as you've been faithful to, do you know me? By the way, what's your name again? Uh, you've done all these in my name, but do you know me? You don't know who I am? I'm Jesus. Ah, oh, you're Jesus. I uh, thought I was doing a purpose-driven life where I just had to do your purposes for you. I didn't know I had to know you, too. Hmm. Could it be that the purpose is to know Jesus, and then you're doing his purposes? Or are you doing your own purposes? I'd say it sounds like purposes to me, you know, a bunch of dolphins running around, you know, going, eh. Oh, my God. What's this guy telling me? I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. He became obedient unto death. The reality of why Jesus came was to save people from hell. Do you care? It's once been said that the church can't fight because it's asleep in the light. And I'm not worried about the church fighting. And I'm not worried about the church doing it. I only care about one thing. The person that's standing or sitting next to you, are they going to hell? Are they going to hell and you're watching them? Have you asked God if you could do something to help them go to heaven? You see, Jesus died so that others might live. What are you willing to give? Are you following Jesus? Or are you just doing what you think Jesus said? Are you obeying what the Father told you today? Be careful. It might cost your life. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. In the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that though he feared, though he were the Son of God, yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered. What price is your Christianity? What cost is your grace? Are you willing to do the same in Jesus' name for what he did? Are you accomplishing in your life the purposes, the plan, the reality of knowing God so well, God your Father, that you may cry and you may ask and you may beg and you may plead and you say, Lord, please don't send me to that other person over there, not one of those. Don't tell me to talk to one of them. That's the pastor's job. That's the evangelist's job. That's the tele-evangelist's job. That's the TV. That's the reason I put my money into the church. So they will do the work. But you surely don't want me to do it, do you, Lord? Me? I don't know how. I'm not sure I could tell anyone about Jesus. I tried to preach once and... All I got was slap in the face. And learned he obedience by the things that he suffered. Jesus learned obedience. You mean, Jesus didn't just automatically come to the conclusion of saying, I'm going to do God's will no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. 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 In the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, even his father, and was heard by God, in that he feared, though he were a son, though he were the son of God, though he were God, he feared 
think about them. Yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. What are you learning about? Is it all goody-goody two-shoes? Or are you suffering and have discovered in the midst of your suffering why you extend grace to others and mercy and forgiveness when God himself has forgiven you your sins? God himself has given you grace. God himself has loved you. What are you doing now? The same? Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Jesus to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. It was so much so important to God that no one ever experienced hell that he gave his son, Jesus, allowing him to even suffer, to even fear, to even know what we feel and go through each day. To choose to say to one person, even if it was just for one, like you, like me, I have not come into the world to condemn the world, but that through me the world might be saved. Are you condemning someone today? Are you showing the condemnation of religion? Or are you showing the salvation of God? You are. God's messenger. What message are you sharing today? Will it save someone from hell? Or will it send them there? God help you. And if you ask him, he will. Trust. Oh my God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. He will direct your path.